Hello, Rock family. Welcome to the Rock Life Podcast. This is Pastor Dan Roth, and this week I've got my very special guest, Pastor Paul Ogando, who oversees our Spanish service as well as missions, some other areas. Pastor Antonio is actually on break. Yes. And uh, he's taking his time off and uh, going on vacation, so we're here together with you guys and glad to be together with you guys this week. Pastor Paul, how are you doing? Man, I'm I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm I'm excited. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I, this is fun. I think I'm I'm glad we started this. I think people are getting a lot out of it. So, well, that's very good. Well, hey, um, you are overseeing our Spanish service called La Roca, yep. uh, and you guys have been going for 18 years now, correct? Correct. And you've been yeah. a part of that since its inception, like. Right at the beginning, you guys were there. Correct. I yeah. remember being in a room with you and two other guys, and it was kind of like, who's going to be the pastor? <laughs> right. and, yes. And, and you were the last man standing. Yeah. <laughs> you outlasted yeah. them all. So one of them's yes. still here. One of the other ones One of the other ones has gone on to some other right. ministry opportunities and things. But, I mean, you just done an excellent job. i got to tell you, um, and as well, all of our listeners, I think our Spanish service is second to none, man. I go in there. I, I know Spanish from from learning it in high school and from being in Southern California. I mean, you got to right. kind of know a bit, but right. um, uh, I don't know everything that's being said in there, and especially when you guys sing, there's words that I'm like, and I'm I'm not familiar with a lot of the Christian words too. Correct. You know, I know that there's almost a, its own language in the Bible. Right. But um, man, I tell you, my 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 eyes just flood with tears when I mm. go in there because the anointing is so strong. Praise God. And, um, you know, you and Pastor Tracy are just absolutely wonderful. So thank you for what you do. Um, a- any any memories from 18 years? I mean, like, it's been a ride, huh? Right. It's, it's been quite a ride. Just like you said, we're there from the beginning. And um, never never planned this. I was actually, some of, if you know the story, I was actually working for uh, Barron and, and International School of Ministry. Yeah. Um, and their Spanish department. And Pastor Jim reached out. Hey, I heard you know, you guys speak Spanish and you and your wife. And so, yeah, well, let's try it. You know, I uh, had no plans really pastoring that. That wasn't part of my mission or I should say ministry DNA. Yeah. Um, but it was God's plan and we embraced it in, in every level and uh, we loved it. Uh, I think the main one has always been that my son, Gabriel, who today is 18 years old. Today. We, today. Wow. Yeah. Hey, happy today. birthday, Gabriel, if you're listening. Yeah. So we started on June 25th of uh, 2006. Wow. So that Sunday, The Rock turned 18. We were starting that day. And um, yeah, my wife left worship, huge belly. Uh, we go out to the courtyard party right after because La Roca started late in the afternoon. We used to do four o'clock services. Wow. Um, and so she's sitting there and she's like, I'm getting really hot. I'm getting really tired. So I was like, hey, let's go. So we left the party a little early. And that night we went to Relin's Hospital and there's Gabriel. Here so. comes Gabriel. <laughs> Yeah. So and he's been a whole lot of fun ever since. Yeah. I love him, man. He's yeah. got a great personality. He's a lot of fun. Loves to he joke is. and play. In fact, uh, <laughs> after this weekend, I sent you the video. Yeah. He sent <laughs> one of my kids a video of him pretending to be me on the video that we did. He's like yeah. in front of the children. This is our absorption child. And he even got down on one knee like when I was sitting on the, the steps for the video. So some of you guys that watched that video this weekend, <laughs> if you haven't seen the message, go online and watch it. And in the middle of that, there's a video of me. Right. Just picture a curly headed. Uh, <laughs> 18 year old <laughs> yes <laughs> making fun of me <laughs> i'm on the in front of the uh, chillers yes um he's been you know out of all th- our three kids he's probably the one that has more of a ministry and a love for church mm. uh that's very i mean both all three do but yeah he has always had a passion for being here working here when he started learning drums just the other day i uh, you know was really moved because you know there's his mom leading worship there's gabriel playing drums and it was really a, that's awesome. a really beautiful moment and the first time he did it was during um, our Easter um, uh, communion night, which is Friday, and yeah. we do it in the youth. So here we are in the youth where he was, you know, came out of in the belly, and his mom leading worship was playing drums. And for me, it was really, a, I took a picture of it, like, oh, my gosh, what a moment. Yeah, that 18 is a moment. years ago, this kid was in her belly. So that was pretty for awesome. Sure. So I, yeah. I love that. <laughs> well, and I just love the longevity. You know, I, I don't right. know how it is in, in church. I'm not like a statistician or anything like that. But just to see 18 years, I mean, I hear about guys that pastored for 10 years, and then they become a consultant. And I'm like, what do you got to say? You know, like, <laughs> give me give me 30, give me 40. You know, right, so the right. fact that you're 18 years in from the beginning, you guys have just done that and then when i came on as a senior pastor i remember you told me you said i i came on with pastor jim i think it was at that time 10 years ago correct yeah it would have been because 18 now correct um you said i came on 10 years ago with a handshake yeah. and we shook hands right and said all right then let's move forward and, yeah. and it's just neat to see so uh this past weekend um obviously we were uh celebrating 36 years of the rocks 18 years of la roca 
been in a finance series, and you guys uh, did the finance series as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. And um, you guys have been in the Book of John, but right. you took a sidestep for this period uh, leading up. And so we covered in the main generosity. You had already covered that, right? Yeah, so I covered that though Sunday before the anniversary. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so um, it's neat to see just how the the, the church and and you guys when you started, you were preaching Pastor Jim's notes, right? Yeah. So the first year and a half, almost two years, um, okay. Pastor Jim would preach one Sunday. I would preach that same message the following Sunday, um, and it was a, a great um, form of growth for me. Yeah. Uh, a great way to get to know the DNA of the Rock, because I was in, you know, I kind of dropped here. I moved from Las Vegas to here. And uh, for me, it was a way to learning faith, learning what The Rock was about, and um, it really helped me a lot. In the beginning, it was kind of weird, um, and even when, actually, when you were on, too, I did some of your messages, too, when you mm-hmm. started, and some of that. But um, one thing I learned for everybody that I used to practice and still do, I used to say, Lord, I can't preach like Pastor Jim, but I need to know what he's saying so that I can communicate yeah. it. And that was one of my practices in prayer every time I look at his notes, and um it, it grew me a lot. So. Yeah, yeah. I did that in the young adults ministry for mm. about a year, year and a half, too, because wow. um, we were trying to do everything across the board, right. sort of like what we've done with the, the uh, Your World series, and we did it um, with the Fear of the Lord, Correct. where everybody was doing the same right. thing. And so I literally would preach the same thing on Fridays that, that he preached uh, the week before. Mm. And um, I don't know if that helped or hindered or, you know, because <laughs> a lot of the young adults went to the main sanctuary service, right. so they'd be like, you know, Pastor yeah. Jim did it better, you know? Right. <laughs> well, I had some of that, some people that um, would come to English services and then at Ten La Roca, they were doing that, and they yeah. were like, well, I can, we kind of heard this, so we don't want to hear it again in Spanish. And there were some of those challenges, but part of the process was not only... Um, was not only the preaching, it was the sticking to the vision of that mm, process in those yeah, times, and that yeah. was really good, too. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it definitely humbles you and puts you under that submission to the leadership. I believe yeah. that's why you're blessed, you know, no. and, and why we're seeing what we're seeing. So, um, you know, talking about generosity, you know, and just uh, the series that we've gone through, you know, I, I made the statement that it was the culmination of the life, mm-hmm. you know, that, that if we start with the tithe, if we right. properly steward the things that God's placed in our hands, then we're going to get to that point of generosity. Right. And there will be no fear or worry because God's our source. Amen. And so, um, you know, just maybe you could address, we, we had some questions coming in, and, yeah. and maybe you can address this for us, and that is, how can I be generous when I'm struggling financially, and what are practical ways uh, to practice generosity even when finances are tight? That's an awesome question. Actually, Tracy and I have, have to grow. We've grown into leaving this way, and I love your example from this Sunday when you talked about giving away the cars. Yeah, because I mean we've we've been through that, and mm-hmm. it was we started giving just like you said. We started giving when we had nothing. Right. I think people are expecting to make money and half money to do it, and part of the process was learning to budget, which you cover in one of your ser- in one of your sermons, um, getting ready. But what I do practically is I heard um, I some teach this called the God account. I came across this teaching that Baron had. And I decided to get the book and read it. It was so interesting. This man mm. um, who was very rich, he lost everything. And in order to rebuild again what he had lost, God gave him an idea. And it was called the God account, that they would put some money in a bank account and it would only use it when God led them to give from that account. Wow. And so Tracy and I, we said, okay, we're tithers. We were always tither, even in the tightest spot of our life. So that wasn't the issue, but we couldn't be generous. We were mm-hmm. so frustrated. There was a special offering. We're like, ah, we got nothing, man. We got to buy bread. We had have a, our first child. Yeah. Um, and so we said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take out $25 of every paycheck. We'll get paid the first and the 15th. And so and we'll put it in that account, untouched. And that account built, and we would have 50 100 200 bucks. And somebody would come, hey, we're raising an offering. And I was like, oh, we have it. Let's give $50. Let's give. And there was zero pressure because right. we weren't affecting our budget. We weren't doing it. We already had set the money aside. And we've been practicing this for a long time. So it didn't start when we were more comfortable financially. It started when we had nothing. We were intentional. Right. And I think that, that shows, like, a lot of times people say, I can't afford to be generous. Right. And when you don't budget, absolutely you can't Correct. because you're going to live to <laughs> the level of what you make, right? Right. Um, but when you budget and you say, well, I don't make that 50 bucks a month, right? It, it, I don't make that. Right. right. Yeah. You'll, you'll live to the rest of what, what you have. Right. And you'll make it work. But, uh, that 50 bucks, if it's a non-negotiable, I think it's a great practice. So you guys started doing that and, um, and you, you were able to see opportunities then as they came. For sure. And I'll give you one pastor that doesn't take money. And this, I credit goes to my wife. Um, again, we were strapped financially, um, you know, in the 08 to 2010 yeah. situation. 
And she just said, okay, since our money's going to maintaining the house and stuff, again, something you went through and yeah. God led you to, you know, do certain choices that were tough. Um, she decided to create this thing she called kind of like the uh, homeless or whatever packs. And she prepackaged a pair of socks, some underwear she bought for, you know, pennies on the dollars and the and, um, and new, new for like 10 cents in one yeah. of those discount stores. And, and she just made it. And she was, you know what, I'm going to be keep my heart open to giving. And she would hand it out and help somebody or prepare a meal. And so the idea behind this whole thing was just because I'm struggling doesn't mean God cannot use me. Yeah. We cannot close ourselves to not being used by God. For sure. You know what I've, I've found even, too, is there's times where people have given me gift cards and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I know, um, you know, sometimes I, I have, you know, food gift cards or restaurants, right. things like that. And I'll put them in my wallet. That way, when my wife and I are out, if we just happen to be somewhere, you know, hey, what do you want for lunch? Well, I've got a gift card to this place. You want to go there, you know, and, right. and it saves us money and that sort of a thing. And so that's always a blessing, you know. Right. But the neat thing is, is I've actually crossed over my mentality as well. I have this in my wallet and there's mm. times where people will be telling me I'm struggling financially or I'm going through a hard time or even right. even things like, you know, I think generosity doesn't just have to be to those who are uh, in need. need right? right. There there may be times where somebody's struggling in their marriage and I've been able to say, hey, why don't you take your wife on a date? That's good. Here's a gift card, yeah. you know, for 50 bucks or whatever it is. Even 25, there's been Correct. times where I've just had, you know, 25. Why, why don't you guys just go out and just, you know, we'll watch the kids or, yeah. you know, get your mom and dad to watch the kids. And then you guys just take some time off and go be together. Correct. You know, Correct. and that's made all the difference in the world to some of the people that yeah. I've been able to bless with those things. But it was something simple that, you know, I just had it. Like you're saying, the God account. Right. You have it. Correct. So why not, you know, and, and I think, you know, for for those of you that maybe you, you're looking at your garage, I've got six bicycles that my kids don't even ride anymore. Right. You know, they all grown them all, <laughs> you know. Well, hey, you have it. Right. Why, why not look and see if there's a program for kids that are underprivileged that can have those those bicycles or something right. like that? So that's good. Yeah. No, I thought that was a great question. Um, here's another one. How can Christians find balance between saving for their future and being generous for others. Again, on that budget lines, because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, if you listen to finance experts, things like that, and especially the Christian ones, they'll, they'll tell you 10% to tithe. Right. Right. And many of them will say 10% for your retirement. Correct. And, um, and that writes, I mean, most people are struggling for a tithe. Correct. Let alone to put something aside for their retirement. And then in the midst of that, they're being told, be generous. Right. You know, <laughs> you have any practical insight for that? <laughs> you know, I think... Um, I would say it goes back to budgeting. It's yeah. really a discipline that um, my mother was an accountant, and we were never wealthy growing up, but she always knew how to have certain things in order in, in, in our limited capacity. And so I, I had to learn that personally because I made some serious financial mistakes when Tracy and I first got married. Uh, number one, because I was new in this country and I kind of fell in the idea of the American economics where you have to live a certain way, do certain things. And so I made some really bad choices. Mm. And um, I remember my story is I, I just, you know, was reading the book of Deuteronomy, teaching it here the first time Pastor Jim taught it. Um, and it says you will lend and not borrow. And it broke mm. my heart. And wow. so I got on my knees and I repented. I said, Lord, this is your promise. You need I, you need to help me. Yeah. And so I started seeing just how to rearrange those things. And so we began practically just if you're tight, I think it all begins with budgeting. It all begins sure. there. And then, um, you know, we personally, I just studied the Dave Ramsey method. And so we did the thousand dollar emergency fund. That was the first thing we did. And we've always kept that. It was thousand dollars that car breaks down, tires, things like that is You've not coming it. out of my daily budget right. for the things like that. Um, so we work that we don't have a huge savings, but we've been able to put a little bit aside on those things. But I'll be honest with you, Pastor. I think as a Christian, because we live on the edge of faith and not, I'm not recommended for everybody. But if you want to take the step, we actually give a lot more than we actually save. We help, you know, again, I'm not bragging. We do. We help children's in the mission field. We have other missionaries. I know you and Pastor Jessica do. We extend ourselves in that area because we just see it worked in others. We see it worked in my in-laws. Right. Like, yeah. My wife's parents are the craziest. I mean, probably Pastor Jim and Deborah are the next thing I've ever seen at that level where they just, nothing is theirs. I mean, they just handing it out. Right. <laughs> and God has kept them. And I just believe that for, for those who are in the faith. So for our listeners just uh, and, and our viewers who don't know your story, you grew up Dominican Republic. Yeah. Okay. Can you just unpack the single mom, like yeah. some of that stuff for them, so that they, they understand, like, 
Right. You, you've had a journey financially Correct. and and really um, the mentality, like you mentioned, the American right. mentality versus what you were coming out of right. from the DR and and then even your your wife's family, right. you know, being missionaries. And th- can you just give us the, the, the broad brushstroke yeah. overview, you know, the headline <laughs> version, Absolutely. you know, headline version is I grew up in a third world country uh, from a single mother. And uh, we struggled financially for many years, but my mother always taught us we were tithers. And yeah. so, um, and you would say, okay, but the Bible says that you would open up the windows of heaven. I think the idea behind that is that you will get to a level of not, I wouldn't say excess, but a level of blessing. That may seem, you know, you have more than you need uh, in order to give, as you taught in Second Corinthians 9. But I believe that part of the process for us was learning that God will meet all of our needs. And I could say, looking back, even going to a thorough country, my needs were met. I was never in the streets. So I was never, you know, missing a meal. I was, you know, didn't have brand clothes, but I had clothes. I wasn't well going naked to school. So <laughs> <laughs> let's not do that. Nope. Um, <laughs> so, you know, stuff like that. So Tracy was the same way. She grew up missionary in, in Latin America. Then they came to the States and they struggled with some things. But my father-in-law was, always known, was a tither. He was a giver. I mean, I was in the mission field with him. And uh, literally, we're walking. He prayed for somebody to give their hearts to the Lord. And there was a lady there, a street lady, and took his shoes off. It's right there on the spot. And he walked in his socks all the way back to the hotel. And I've seen him do that over and Mm. over cars and uh, whatever he had. just And God has provided. I'll just give you a quick one so you understand why this works. Right now, my father was very critical in his health and a lot of things. He had to go away from ministry. And my mother-in-law told me the other day, for the last five years, five years, she gets, I don't know, maybe 1000 to $1,200 deposited into her account, and she can't figure out who does it. She has no idea. She doesn't even know. She has no idea. And that has sustained them with their mortgage, with some of the health stuff. Wow. We help his family. And just little things like that that God has done throughout the year because of what they've done. And God can do miracles. You don't have to be a first world, have all the money. There's something about I will provide for your needs that yeah. is a, that's important. Well, you know, in our in our biblical example that we've been going through, Elijah was being fed by ravens, yep. you know, and yep. drinking from a brook. Yeah, uh, he went to a literal widow's house Correct. to be sustained on a little bit of flour and a jar of oil. I mean, Amen. you talk about a cake; it's just literally flour and oil. You right. know, there's no other ingredients, just baked. You know, on some sticks. If you put some beans, it's called pupusa, but we won't go there. <laughs> Yeah, uh, us gringos, we we hear poo poo and we say yeah. no, no, thank you. You know, whether it's on the platter or whether it's, yeah. uh, you know, but um, but no, I mean, I, I literally, I mean, right. this is this is what we're looking, and yet needs, right? Yeah. Come back to basic necessities, Correct. and I think that might be where a lot of people's generosity fund or savings fund or emergency fund, yep. the budget, right? If if we close that circle, of what is our need? Amen. Right? Yeah. Then anything outside of that. Hey, we've got excess dough, correct? To share, right? Yeah. To do yeah. something with. So that's great. Um, you know, sometimes people wonder about this, and I've heard this question a lot. Maybe you've heard this one too. Mm. Can I give my time and talents instead of money? I would say yes, you can. But there's something about money. Again, both of us have shared this. So many verses in the Bible talk about money, finances, and resource. Yeah. And you can do talent and time, and it's important because you can get time back. And so time is precious. So when you do it, it's wonderful. But in the Bible, Jesus, God, everything talks about money. There's something, there's a connectivity of what we hold precious for for exchanging, um, you know, that that makes sense to us. And I think that comes with the dependency on God. Yeah. Um, and I, I believe you covered this weekend when we talked about, and I covered the weekend before when we talked about that the kingdom of heaven is to, you know, we give and we receive instead of we exchanging, we're selling. Yeah, it's not and buying and selling. And selling. It's not buying and, and selling. Receiving. And yeah. so it's so important for us to have those concepts. Um, and it's important. I wouldn't say yes. I would say yes, you can, but make your way towards money because something happens when money is released. I agree. I think that when, uh, you know, you think in terms of this, like the government, mm. if you ask them, can I give you my time and my talent instead of my money right. for my taxes, they would tell you no. Correct. Right. And then there's a, a section of scripture where God starts talking. I mean, he's he's bringing a scathing rebuke mm. to the children of Israel. And he says, would you give your governor? Right the animals that you're trying to bring to me for yep. a sacrifice, you know? Yep. And I think that's where, uh, you know, there, there has to be a heart check, right? Correct. Um, where if all you have is time and talent, you don't have money, literally don't have money, right? right. That's one thing. Correct. Where, where you say, I'm going to give to God whatever I have. I've, I've heard this story in a, a sermon 
years and years ago of a man poor came into the back of a church and at the offering time they handed out the the plate which was a mm. circle right right old church dusty floor that sort of a thing just dirt floor right and um, he had nothing literally in poverty mm. no, no money and uh and someone said do you have anything to give sir and he stood up he drew a circle on the ground and he stepped inside of it mm. right how beautiful wow. is that right i think yeah. god sees those things and Correct. god sees that heart and so if you literally have nothing to give and you're putting your time and your talent in, it won't be long before you have something to give. That's correct. Right? Because whatever you sow, you're going to reap. There's, right. there's going to be things given to you. Given it will be given to you. Right. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It's Absolutely. it's a spiritual principle. Yep. However, most of the time when I talk to people and I find out their budget and I find out... Mm. <laughs> you got money you just don't want to give it yeah that's correct (laughs) and and that's where i think it comes in that god would say would you give your governor that would you give the the, you know would you try and give your time and talent to a tax man correct no you'd give money so why would we treat god any differently absolutely absolutely i mean the two examples that you brought with that one is malachi and i mentioned that to the church because malachi 310 is really a rebuke yes the rebuke is man you guys are doing all this stuff wrong can you at least do this portion right Notice God didn't say, come back and attend the temple, you, you know, you should, and they were supposed to. He just said, start there. And so that's important. And then the widow, Jesus said he sat next, next to the basket. Right. And he was seeing the difference between rich people and the widow. So Jesus didn't see their talent, didn't see what they're—he just saw what they were giving. And so money is important because it, it connects to our heart, it connects to our attitude, to our understanding, to everything we're doing. So. Right. Yeah. My goodness. Now, what about someone who doesn't feel good about giving, right? God loves a cheerful giver. Yes. Right? So, I mean, <laughs> on paper, they go, okay, I know I have to do this. Right. Um, but then it says don't give out of grudging obligation or compulsion, right? right. Or, or because you've been pressured into giving by the preacher or whoever, right? Or because of even, I, I think even the prying eyes of your neighbors, sometimes right. it feels like, oh, they're reaching in their pocket. I should reach into my Correct. pocket, you know? like. Yeah. But it says not to give under compulsion or under an obligation to give, right. anything like that. So what if someone doesn't feel like giving? What if they, they, they you know, I that's feel a, like keeping it. Yeah, no, I mean, we all feel like keeping it. I mean, that's that's <laughs> that's human true. nature. That that's is true. human nature, right? When we were kids, it was like, that's mine, that's mine. And if you grab it, it's mine, too, because it was there, right? <laughs> a a fun that? read is if you can ever find the uh, the laws of, of uh, property possession of toddlers. Have mm, you ever seen that? No, no. It's hilarious. It's absolutely it's like if I can see it, it's mine. Right. If I have it, it's mine. If you have it, it's mine. Yeah. If I had it and I put it down and you pick it up, it's, it's mine. No <laughs> yeah, it was it was like it just goes on like that forever. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. And so what I would say, Pastor, is to me, there are people who are not believer in tithers. That's their issue. I see tremendous amount of biblical backing towards tithing. Right. So tithing, just like you taught us, is the basic principle. So when the Bible is talking about give it voluntarily and give it and not grudgingly, all those were regarding to special offerings. Sure. None of that was regarding to. So when people are like, well, I don't want to give it all, then you, there's an issue right there. Mm-hmm. So let's say you're a tither now. We're asking, hey, to volunteer offerings. Then you should find the joy in it. You should find the, hey, God, what do you want me to do? And how do you want me to proceed? And uh, because God is, I mean, his word says he will back that. There's something that happens in right. this exchange that we don't become uh, attached to materialistic things and things. And God knows what we need and want, and we, we can present it to him. So I would say if you don't want to give, the answer is not just, oh, I'm free to do anything, yet you're free. I would still say go ask the Lord, check that, because something in you is holding you back. Now, you shouldn't give to everything. You shouldn't sit in, you know, the, the I think it's called the ASPCA commercials. Those oh, my like, gosh. Those things Sarah are Sarah McLaughlin so is singing yeah. and you're crying. And yeah. Oh, my gosh. I will remember you or something like that. It's just terrible. And yeah. the dog's looking sideways all sad. I think you actually see a tear fall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so at that point, I'm like, okay, I'm being worked up in a game here. <laughs> this ain't happening, right? Oh, uh, my gosh. So my two dogs are too well fed, so I'll leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, I got uh, two fat little pills, too, at my house, <laughs> man. Those those dogs are well fed. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, those things are like, that's a little different to me, but there's something that happens with money. And so I would say, check your attitude. Check, push that and yeah. say, hey, I'm going to help somebody. I'm going to give to somebody. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, um, I, I think about uh, a time you were mentioning special offerings and things like that. I remember um, we had the Wototo Children's mm. Orphanage come, and uh, not the orphanage itself, but their leaders came, right. and they were sharing the story, and they were saying, we're appealing to you guys to help. 
Right. And Pastor Jim moved with compassion, got up with tears in his eyes and, and said, I'm selling my boat. You know, right. he, he had a, uh, when he built this church, there was a, a godly man who was the head of the company that built this church. And um, Pastor Jim and him, you know, created a friendship. This man blessed him. I right. uh, wanted to buy my helicopter at first, actually. And he said, no, I don't want a helicopter. He said, then what do you want? He said, well, I'd like a boat, you know? Right. So he received a boat from him. And, um, and so he said, I'm selling my boat. It was a precious gift mm. from a friend wow. that uh, he got up. He said, I'm selling my boat. And I remember praying and saying, okay, God, what do you want me to do? And, uh, you know, I, I had a love of guitars, always have, still do. Yeah. And I remember uh, God showed me I had my first guitar. Mm. Uh, it was one that my parents gave to me because I had learned how to play. My dad went and bought me a guitar. Wow. This is so cool. It was the Wayne's World reproduction nice. model, Fender Stratocaster <laughs> white. It actually had the Wayne's World logo in the back on the, on the, the, you know, the well, part where it holds right. the, the, the neck the to the, the actual base of the guitar. Right. And so it had the Wayne's World logo on it and it was a great guitar. Mm -hmm. And I remember God said, I want you to sell that guitar. And right. so I took that one as well as an, I had an acoustic guitar. I got $20 for the acoustic at a pawn shop here on Baseline Street in San Bernardino. <laughs> I remember I just went, that was an easy one. Yeah, we'll give you 20 bucks. All right, yeah, I'll take what. Because right. God, God had spoke to me, take whatever they, they offer right. and just give that money. Correct. And, um, and my wife and I were young, married, you know, and, uh, and didn't really have too much, but uh, Again, what do I have in my hand? Well, I've got Correct. an abundance of guitars. I had a Correct. Telecaster. I had another, um, a newer acoustic guitar. And so I sold my old acoustic. And then I sold my, my Wayne's World Fender Squire mm. Stratocaster remake. Amazing. And uh, I remember talking to the guy at, at Guitar Center. And I didn't feel like giving this guitar away. I didn't feel like selling it. I love that guitar. Right. You know what I mean? And, um, and especially the sentimental value of it. Um, I mean, it was dirty from my fingers being on it and, you know, playing and doing shows and stuff like that. I, I you know, it was still broke. Like, you know what I mean? Like the, the connection to the jack coming right. in, it was still a bit spotty. And so, um, so I just said, hey, you know, in this condition, what can I sell it for? And the guy looked it up online and he said, well, in Canada, they're selling for about 200 bucks. I'll give you 200 bucks. And I'm like, wow, okay, you know, I'll take right. 200 bucks for the guitar. Right. And so um, I was able to give 220 bucks, and we had promised wow. some more that we were going to set aside monthly and that sort of a thing. So we did that. But what's crazy is, is remember we talk about whatever you sow, you'll reap, right? Correct. Years later, I had a friend. Uh, he was a very sentimental guy, a uh, wonderful man of God, and and a close friend of mine for a number of years. And um, and so uh, I told the story to the church, mm. and um, and. Little did I know, he said that next morning after I told that story to the church, he was at Guitar Center. Wow. Waiting for it to open. <laughs> and in his mind, he thought everyone in the church is going to want to go and buy that guitar and give it back to Pastor Dan. So I better be there first because I want to be the guy to do it. Wow. Well, you know, I think we all could guess. He was the only one in line that right. morning. <laughs> no one else had that thought. But he went and he didn't have the money to do it at the mm. time, but he bought that guitar. Wow. And he waited, I think, six or seven years to give it back to me. That's crazy. And on Christmas, I got a picture of myself with a bewildered look on my face because he gave it back to wow. me. And I opened it up, and I was like, whoa, it's a guitar. Like, right. And I'm sitting there staring at it, and I'm like, this looks like my first guitar. I had no idea about the end of it's the story. Cr it's crazy. It's cool. one of those wild stories yeah. that I'm like, man. <laughs> um, and, and as I'm looking at it, I'm like, this looks like my guitar. He goes, it is your guitar. And I start to look closer. I pick it up. First thing I look for is the Wayne's World logo. And then I look. It still has the dirty fingerprints. And the jack is still missing. I'm like, you could have at least waited for them to fix the guitar up and clean it before you give it back to me, right. like before you buy it. But, um, but yeah, it was, it was wow. my guitar. He, he bought cool. it. And, and it's amazing. Uh, you know, there's a scripture that says, cast your bread upon the waters, and after yes. many days it will return to you, right? Yeah. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Amen. You yeah. know? And, uh, and we never have to worry about lack when we give. And I think that helps our hearts. You know, yeah. for those of you that may be thinking, man, I don't feel like giving. Correct. Yeah, I didn't feel like giving that guitar. Yeah. I hated giving that guitar. Actually, I said the sentimental value, I wanted right. it. But, you know, anything that I have is the Lord's. And uh, it was just amazing to see that come yeah. back to me. That's awesome. Kind of crazy. Great story. Yeah. Um, how important is, is attitude when it comes to giving? Attitude is huge. Attitude is so enormous. So Second Corinthians 9, I believe, is verse 5. Paul says in the New Living Translation, I, I love it because I love the New he says, 
I want you to be ready for this offering so that kind of you don't when I show up, I don't want to see your kind of bad attitude. And giving. <laughs> like, I be love ready because you're promising to give. And I yeah. love when I every time I read, it, I laugh. Second or nine is awesome. Uh, and so I realized that I'll tell you a personal testimony. Um, you know, what was being givers what was in tithers. And I, we were struggling at one time and we were tithing. And I was telling the Lord, you know, in prayer, God. Why? How come if we're tithers, we're going through this and, you know, my prayer time, I'm journaling and I'm, I get a vision. The vision is this. The vision is I see an angel with his hands tied. Wow. The audience wrote it down and I said, Lord, what is that? And here's what the Lord says. He says, even though you tithe, what you're saying is binding my hands. Wow. And I was like, whoa, I made a... Obviously, and, you know, our wives are super spiritual. I tell my wife, she's like, I told you, you got to I was like, <laughs> she was already there. Girl, relax. Yeah, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> so, but, you know, it was true. It was like, so I, so it showed me really powerful. Like God spoke to me like, hey, listen, you can be a giver, but if you're destroying everything with your attitude, with what you're saying, it's like, yeah, I'm giving to the Lord, but I'm this and that. And it, mm. So both of them are important in how yeah. you present that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I text my wife the other day, you're right. And she responded back, it happens every now and then, you know, like, <laughs> don't she be had so our print department printed large. <laughs> yep. 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 It's so funny. So funny. Well, um, last question. If, if someone is, you know, starting this journey, mm. they're tithing, they're stepping out in faith, but then they just heard about budget. And so they're, they're, they're getting things right. And, and there may be that hesitancy when it comes to generosity and extra. Right. How do, how, how do people trust God? that he's going to provide if they give generously. Man, um, that's what's called faith. You just got to you just got to believe that that what he says is true. Um, when we lived in Las Vegas, uh, Ethan was probably five, six months old. We purchased a condo and, um, you know, we got a little strapped financially, so we need to, to readjust some things. So we had a financial consultant that was part of the church help us out. And uh, he came in and we showing us how to rearrange our budget. And I knew some things, but I was limited at my knowledge. So he helped us. And this is what he said. He said, look, I think for you guys to get out of some of this financial situation, maybe you should lower the amount you give to the church. Mm. And then you guys can put it aside here and there. And I just I, I something came on me and I said, don't touch that. Yeah. He said, we'll figure around. Let me tell me, cut the cable, do this, do that. Don't touch that. Right. And I just made a commitment that that was that was non-negotiable in mm -hmm. our lives. It was non-negotiable. And, uh, you know, my wife can tell you that. Even though she was a giver, she was never disciplined in her tithing. And the first thing when we got married, I was like, nah, we can't. That's not to play for. I, yeah. We're not playing around with that. So we'll figure out other ways. And, um, and man, I just, again, we had difficult seasons, but we've never been in the streets. We've never lacked food. Our children have never lacked clothing. God opens opportunities some other ways. Not all financial. There's favor. There's, you know, I can tell you a story when we bought a car that was, you know, the guy – really lied to me when he sold me the car and it was a disaster the oil pan broke it, the engine and this was recently also in that same stage when we were buying the condo and i was so mad i was like lord what is happening and i just in, in that prayer lord showed me hey take it to this so we take it to this mechanic and the guy oh let me pull out your vin number and he's like oh man this car's still in the warranty you'll get a new engine wow no joke yeah i had zero dollars i was like <laughs> all right lord then we're gonna keep trusting you you know there it was that go. same season of yeah. those things where things like that were happening to us and I, all i could say is trust him trust absolutely him. yeah absolutely well pastor paul has been just phenomenal sitting with you and talking through all this stuff and uh you know i just want to encourage our, our viewers and our listen listeners trust god step out in faith believe god you yeah. know start by trusting god as your source no matter what Get that tithe, like we talked yeah. about, non-negotiable. I love yeah. the fact that you said that non-negotiable. Yeah. When we prioritize God, guess what? God prioritizes us. Amen. And that's a neat thing. I mean, and that's absolutely scriptural. You know, yeah. God says, those that honor me, I will honor. Those that despise me will be lightly esteemed. Mm. And it's just a, a neat thing that when we set aside that tithe as non-negotiable, God yeah. says, well, hey, then it's non-negotiable. I'm going to take care of your needs. Amen. And then budget. Right. Get get those things in order. Start to to look for what are the needs and close that circle of, right. of what do I need to live on? OK, Correct. this is that number. Everything outside of that then becomes that God fund like you Correct. talked about. Right. Yeah. You start setting aside for generosity. And uh, and all of a sudden, I believe that's when life becomes fun. I mean, how, how cool is it? How fun is it? Yeah. At this stage to, to bless and to give and to. Absolutely. I mean, those are some of the greatest joys of my life is when, when people aren't expecting it and their face lights up or, yeah. you know, 
or yeah. make them cry. That's yeah. always a good one, right? They... <laughs> That's the effect I was looking for. I was <laughs> waiting for that one. Take a picture, honey. <laughs> but I mean, those are fun times, right? Yeah, where, where, where we get to be God's extension of his goodness, and right? Goodness. On the earth and distribute yeah. his goodness. So make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to share, and make sure to get back to church. La Roca. So you guys going back to the book of John next week? Yep. Back in the book of John, and then we are launching into the book of Romans this coming week. We love you guys. We look forward to seeing you in church and as well online.